All right, I'm going to make this video quick because I'm going to save this last stream. It has become a burden on my spirit to make sure that everybody understands the goodness and power of Jesus Christ. All day today, I've been experiencing just getting to know just how good God's grace is and understanding the power of Jesus Christ to, to unto salvation. Jesus has vowed these things. He has promised these things. I want to go to the book of Matthew real quick. I'm going to just move by the spirit. Uh, we, we need to understand that everything that Jesus says, Jesus says, everything that I say has come from the father. So which means everything that Jesus says also comes from the father. And we know the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God, which means that basically all of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, for God is three in one. If you, we can get to that, ex, we can get to a deep study on that later, but let's not get distracted. Jesus has decreed these things. God has decreed these things. We need, I, I want to go through these things. I want to let people, let remind y'all what Jesus has promised us in him. Let's go. In fact, in fact, let's let's go back to there's so much here. But I'm gonna stick in the, I'm gonna stay in the book of Matthew. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to move quick here. Let's talk about when Jesus heals the centurion's servant, right? I'm going to just read this passage. And I want to I wanna talk about something, right? It says, when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion uh, searching for him and saying, Lord, my servant lies in, at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, to them that, that followed. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way, and as you so, as you have believed, so it be done. Jesus is declaring right here, as you believed, so so it shall be done. So, what what was he talking about? The centurion was recognizing Jesus's authority, knowing that Jesus has the authority to do whatever he wants. That at Jesus's word, everything that Jesus said would happen or commands to have done, it will be done. Just as Jesus has commanded it to be. We need to have that type of faith. We need to understand that Jesus has that authority. Jesus has the authority as to whatever Jesus commands, it will be done. That whatever Jesus says that saves us, will we are saved by this. Jesus says in the gospel multiple times that who, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever abides in me and I in him, they have, shall have eternal life. Jesus, he literally vows it over and over and over again. All of those who are in me shall be saved. All those who follow my commandments love me. All those who trust in me and believe, all those who repent and trust in me and believe shall be saved. The first thing that Jesus said was repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. We must repent. All throughout the Bible, we see that God wants us to repent. For it also says that God has 
no desire that any should perish, but that everybody comes to what? Repentance. Jesus also say, says he's the vine. I am the vine and you are the branches. So whoever is not in Jesus will be cut off. Everybody who is not in the vine cannot produce fruit. They are not in Jesus. If you put your trust in Jesus for salvation, you are sealed. You are protected. You, your name is in the book of life. And the book of Revelation, when the books are opened and everybody is judged according to their works, notice that everybody is according to the works, according to what's in those books. But notice what it says in the end there. It says, whoever's name is not found in the book of life will not be saved. Whoever's name is not found in the book of life, they will be thrown into the pit of fire, the, that, the lake of fire that burns with brimstone forever. How do you have your name written in the book of life? How? Well, we know that the only way to be saved is through Jesus. Jesus is the gate. Only through him can we be saved. Jesus is the only way to the Father. He's the only mediator between God and man. He is the only way. He is the gate. He is the guide. He is the path. The battle has already been won. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Whoever abides in him will be saved. Whoever believes and puts their full trust in Jesus because of Jesus. Remember when Jesus was talking about the bread of life. Let, let's go really quickly to uh, let, let's go real quickly to when Jesus fed the 5,000. Let me, let me look for it real quick here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a lot in here. So uh, I'm trying to stay in the book of Matthew. Uh, just moving, moving quickly. Moving quickly, quickly. Okay. I'm so glad I have these, these like footnote type things on here, so I know where to go to. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I, I can just paraphrase what happened because I'm pretty sure most of you know the story, but the reason why I look at this scripture and really like show y'all what it says is because we we need to make sure that this is based and founded on the word of God. So we get the exact word for word words of Jesus. Because I want everybody to have a full understanding about what it means to be in Christ. I want everybody to understand the life-saving grace, the good news of the gospel, the love of God in Jesus. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me go to the book of John. Okay. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's around after he does it. Okay. It, it's, in, it's in John chapter 6. Okay. So I'm going to just read from verse 22. Um, actually, no. Okay. I'm going to read verse 26, and I'm going to go down until the Holy Spirit has me stop, all right? Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. So Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, seek me. You seek me because, not, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for meat that perishes, but for meat that endures to ever, everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him, for him has God the Father sealed. Right? Let's skip down to verse 29. It says, and this is also the literal words of Jesus. He says, This is the work of God that you that you believe on him who he has sent. Okay? That that's who what we should do for salvation. Let's skip all the way down to verse 32. These are his literal words. He says, Verily, verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. 
Let's go to verse 35. These are little, the literal words of Jesus. I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. That is a decree from Jesus. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. This is a decree. All that the, fa all that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but whose will? But the will of him who that sent me. So the same will that Jesus has is the same will of the Father, the same will of the Holy Spirit. And this is and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son of that who's that which sees the Son and believes on him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He says in verse 41, I am the bread which came down from heaven. In verse 32, I came down. Oh, wait, no, this is this Pharisees when he says I came down. From, okay, so verse 33, he, these are literally words, the literal words of Jesus. Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the father has sent me. Um, except the father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is, and this is, he's reassuring, he's repeating himself, showing that, yes, Jesus really means what he says. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, has heard and has learned of the Father comes to me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me has eternal life. This is a royal decree from Jesus himself. He who believes on me has eternal life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread that comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the li he, Jesus, Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus says in verse 30, uh, 53 down, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Who whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, I and, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me even shall live by me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat the manna and are dead. He that eats of this bread shall live forever. Whoever believes and trusts in Jesus, whoever feeds themselves with him, whoever soaks up his ways and follows after him and puts their whole trust in him for their fulfillment and for their righteousness, those people guaranteed will be saved. This is the good news of the gospel, that Jesus Christ came and manifested in the flesh. He has come in the flesh and died on the cross for our sins so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We need to stop downplaying the gospel. Understand that God so loved the world. People say, oh, this is just a scripture we keep hearing all the time. So let me, let me paraphrase it in a way that you probably haven't heard it yet. God loves you so much that he died for you. In fact, I want you to insert your name to John 3, 16. God so loved you that he gave his only son so that 
you may not perish, but you may have eternal life. For God did not come into the world to condemn you, insert your name, and condemn you, but that you may be saved. This is a message to the whole world and everybody watching. Jesus Christ is the only way. There is nothing you can do to get in heaven. You will get into heaven because you put your trust in Jesus and his righteousness because of Jesus in his righteousness. And all those who believe in his name and trust in him have the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. You must die to your sins. Put yourself away and put your trust in Jesus. Repent of your sins. Turn away from yourself because everything you do is like filthy rags to the Lord. It doesn't matter how good of a person you think you are. Our works are like filthy rags to the Lord. It is not because of our righteousness or anything that we do that gives us to eternal life. It's all the finished work of the cross. It's all the finished work of Jesus. And once we realize that we will be set free, the truth shall set you free. Jesus Christ is the only way to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the only way to life. And until you get that, you will never be free. And once you truly know the deep revelation of this and how this just how much it costs the fact that G that that sin is worthy of death and jesus literally let oh my gosh and i'm gonna split this video up so i can upload it everywhere everybody needs to know this understand this when jesus died on the cross why did jesus say uh why did why did jesus say father father why have you forsaken me because that is what happens when you sin. Jesus literally bore every single, every single, um, every single reproach for sin. He literally put it all on himself just so that we may have eternal life. Righteous. In the Bible, it says that there no, only blood, the, the shedding of blood is the only thing that could really be a good sacrifice for sins so it needs to be a righteous sacrifice jesus being innocent the holy son of god came in the flesh and died was perfect because we couldn't be for perfect he was perfect for us because we can't be perfect and he died for us being the sacrifice for our sins and he had for a moment as you can see on the cross because he says Father, Father, how, why have why have you forsaken me? He literally went through all of that, all the things that we deserve on that cross. The beating, the spitting, the whipping was in the belly of the earth for three days. The Father departed for him while he was on the cross for, for a moment. He bore all of our sins on the cross, becoming the and because Jesus is eternal, he is the son of God. He is of God. He is from God. He is God. He eternally, through him, because he is God, basically God himself offered himself on the cross for our sins. This is the love of God to eternal life, that all who puts their trust in his righteousness and follows after him and puts away their own way and trusts fully on Jesus Christ for their salvation shall be saved. Everybody's talking about the book of Revelation now. What are, what are the traits of those who overcame the beast and his image and the mark of the beast and all that? These are those, this is what it says in the book of Revelation. These are those the, the, the who overcame the beast and they overcame the beast in his image by what the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony because they followed Jesus and they believed on him for salvation. The only thing that can get us into heaven is Jesus Christ. The only way we can get in heaven is not because of what we do, because Jesus God remem rem remember, God knows that we are sinful. He knows that we make mistakes. That's why he calls us to repent of our sins. That's why God desires us to repent, that he desires that no one man perish, but that everybody comes to repentance. We must repent and believe on Jesus Christ because of his righteousness and follow after him and be more like him. 
Everything we do in our life, everything that saves us revolves around Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no eternal life. Without Jesus Christ, there is no eternal life. Without Jesus Christ, there is no eternal life. Everything in this world is vanity. It is in vain. It does not matter. It does not count anything towards our salvation. Because guess what? What Jesus said, he says, when I come back, I am making all things new. Jesus said, I am making all things things new, all things, which means all these things we think gives us eternal life, all these works is not going to matter. These things of the past, Jesus says in the book of Revelation, all the things of the past will perish. All these things will be wiped away. All your tears will be wiped away. All these things of the past will be forgotten and he will make all things new. Everything in this life does not matter. Everything relies upon our obedience and love for God. It all relies on our faith and trust in Jesus Christ for our salvation. That is all that matters in this life. If anything else in this world matters more to you than your salvation in Christ to eternal life, then it is vanity and you are probably not following God. You probably love the world way more than you love God. Because if you truly knew what the power of God is and why this is so important to Jesus that he proclaims it and decrees it so many times, if you knew it, you would not, you would not care if you lose anything in this life. Jesus is the center of life. He is the way and the truth and the life. He has decreed it. He is the power of God unto salvation. He is the very word and essence of God. He is the very representation of the true love of God. And Jesus said himself that there is no greater love, no man has any greater love than this, that he would die for his friends. And Jesus died so that everyone who calls upon his name and trusts in him shall, as he had decreed it, shall have eternal life. Whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this blood shall have eternal life. For his body was broken for our transgression and his blood was shed for our transgressions. And those who overcome the beast and his image and the mark and all that stuff are saved by what? They overcame the beast by the blood of Jesus. How do you overcome somebody by the blood of Jesus? Because it's your faith. It's not because they did something or they didn't do something. It's because they trusted in Jesus. They didn't trust on what the media was putting out. They didn't trust on what the Antichrist is putting out. They didn't trust that they will be protected by anything in this world, or that they will be secured eternally by anything in this world. They completely put their focus and trust on Jesus Christ because in him is salvation. This is the love of God to humanity that all who put their trust in the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. Now, does that mean we should just go on sinning so grace may abound? No. If you love Jesus, you will follow his commandments. So you shouldn't just willfully sin. But if you repent and come to the Lord Jesus Christ and die to yourself daily and trust in him fully for your salvation, you will be saved. And I'm going to keep proclaiming this. I'm going to keep proclaiming this to make because this is the foundation it's not just the word. It's not just our lifestyle. Our foundation is Jesus. Because the word just gives us knowledge, wisdom, and the Holy Spirit knowledge. And it helps us discern the things in this life. And it's the book of prophecy. It's a book of truth. And it gives us wisdom and knowledge that we can use that's profitable to all good works in our life. But the foundation of our true salvation is Jesus. He's the way and the truth and the life. The just like Jesus said to the Pharisees, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you read the scriptures diligently because in them you think you because you think that in them you have eternal life. But all these scriptures point to me because Jesus is the true foundation to righteous eternal life. This is the love of God that he sent his only begotten son that, so that whoever puts their trust in him, whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And no one can come to Jesus except the father, except the father allows him. This is using the words of Jesus. So if you have even the slightest bit of conviction, if you have the slightest bit of 
of, of hope that this is true, if you have the, even the slightest bit of conviction of this message that you must give your life to Jesus Christ, then that is the Father calling you because he is calling you to come to Jesus so that if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your name is written in the book of life. Then it doesn't matter. If you remain in Christ, your name is written in the book of life. And even if you don't take part in the first resurrection, because your name is in the book of life and you died in Jesus Christ, you will be in heaven. You will. You do have a secure eternity because God is not mocked and God does not lie. Jesus does not lie. God does not lie. He makes promises and he fulfills them. He said we are saved in Jesus Christ. He means it. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Trust in him fully. Trust me, there are so many Christians even who may be watching this who think that they are saved and think that they know God and they think they know Jesus and the love of God. But in all reality, they don't really put trust in God. They're just going with the motions. They're just going to church every now and then and singing a couple of hymns. Jesus, your trust in following Jesus is more than just singing a couple of hymns and just going to church every now and then. It's a genuine relationship. You must get to know him. And the first way to get to know him is to understand how much this costs, how much sin costs our life and how much Jesus actually just saved us from. You must deny yourself and follow after Jesus. And unless you do that, you will never be able to truly know Jesus. And I hope this message bless you because I'm going to have more like it. God bless you all. And I hope you have a nice day.